After almost two years of negotiations and stall talks, there has been a breakthrough in the multi-billion dollar Bahama project. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Altaviz Munnings. It's always good to see you. Thanks so much for tuning in. By this time next year, Bahama is expected to be up and running, providing the much-anticipated injection into the Bahamian economy that was initially projected. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie, accompanied by his cabinet colleagues and affected employees, vendors, contractors, and retailers, delivered the good news that Bahama will soon be back on track and thousands of Bahamians back to work. Clint Watson starts our coverage tonight from the Cabinet Office. The government of the Bahamas and the Export-Import Bank of China signed an agreement under which the Bahama Resort will be completed and sold to a world-class hotel and casino operator. It's the news Bahamians have been anxious to hear, now a reality. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie delivering on a promise to get negotiations and what has been an ongoing saga with Bahama to a place where progress can now be made to complete the multi-billion dollar wonder. On Monday, the Supreme Court approved the arrangements. But what's being further described as remarkable with these negotiations is the ability of the government to get all three of its key objectives met. Firstly, to ensure that construction at Bahama would be resumed as quickly as possible. Secondly, to make every effort to ensure that the casino and casino hotel, the convention center and its hotel, and the golf course would open before the end of the 2016-2017 winter season. And thirdly, to ensure that payment of claims <coughs> to Bahamian creditors and contractors who previously had little or no prospect of recovering anything from Bahama. Prime Minister Christie confirmed that construction will reconvene as early as September and will be carried out by the original contractor, China Construction, who has agreed to resolve outstanding claims with its suppliers and subcontractors. The China XM Bank will fund all remaining construction costs to complete the project. And that's not all, contrary to predictions that the Chapter 11 bankruptcy by Bahama would have left Bahamian creditors in the dark, the Prime Minister was pleased to announce that with this arrangement, that will not happen. Under this agreement made today, funds will be made available to enable them to receive a significant part and possibly all of the value of their claims. Going forward, many of the same people and companies who were previously contracted will be re-engaged to complete the project. The government of the Bahamas and the Bahamian utility companies, such as BPL, will receive payment for some of their outstanding claims against the Bahama companies. The Prime Minister was clear that throughout the 20 months of discussions, paramount to his focus has always been the Bahamian people. While Bahamians holding commercial leases and concessions will be permitted to continue, the thousands of former Bahamian employees of Bahama will receive outstanding money due to them. Unpaid salaries, severance pay, accrued vacation pay, and notice of payments due to termination. Additionally, Sums deducted from employees and former employees' salaries and pension contributions will be repaid. The nation's leader noted that the government will extend appropriate concessions to facilitate construction and to promote a successful operation. He said the completed project will then be sold to a qualified world-class operator. Mr. Christie also committed to releasing in the days to come the details agreed on, noting that a large amount of paperwork still has to be done to implement the deal. The Prime Minister heralded great days and opportunities ahead for Bahamians. He summed up the completion of this major challenge, giving thanks to God and to those who worked on the negotiation teams. He used a familiar phrase now coined by the Bahamian people. I'm enormously grateful and proud of everyone who in these last days did what it took to use the saying, dive across the finish line. <laughs> Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Former Bahama employee Denise Abraham Singh expressed her gratitude to the government for this latest move on Bahama, while past president of the Bahamian Contractors Association, Godfrey Forbes, called it a good day for contractors. Peter White of Ganite Pools, who's representing Bahamian subcontractors and businesses owed money from Bahama, 
So what's amazing is that contractors and the Bahamian people who owed each other never once argued during the process. He has seen all of us who have been suffering and he's come through for us. Thank you, Prime Minister, for, for your dedication, for you welcoming us and hearing our concerns and our prayers. And your team, your team has been so professional and so welcoming. And the agencies that were there to assist us, the National Insurance Board and the Social Services Department, a team of professional people who extended themselves above and beyond to assist the team here. I thank you, sir. I don't know what kind of shuffling you were doing, but I'll tell you the truth, <laughs> it worked. And uh, I must say on behalf of our president and all of our members of the Bohemian Contractors Association, we are indeed thankful. Negotiating this contract, what you have negotiated, probably is almost impossible to negotiate. And it's been done. Um, so if you took the statistics on it, it's impossible to do it. But it was done, and there's always that saying that when you're across the table and the person who blinks first is screwed. <laughs> and in this case, you didn't blink. No. And we're so grateful that you didn't blink. Business Development Director at John Bull Group of Companies, Inga Bovleg, who represents retailers at the resort, said the deal is a prayer answered and a promise fulfilled. We've been at the table with you as far as the retailers um, over at Bahama, the leaseholders. Um, we sat across from you and you, we explained our position. We told you of the millions and millions of dollars that we had invested, the number of employees that we've then retained and we still have on staff because we believed in your promise and you came through for us and you came through for Bahamians and we thank you. Um, and in the forefront of my mind is believe in the Bahamas and that you believe in Bahamians and you looked out for Bahamians every step of the way and everything that you outlined in your speech this evening. So we really and sincerely, th sincerely thank you. This is a wonderful day and it's, there's no better timing. Um, I think that this is the beginning of of great things to come in our economy. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senator the Honorable Allison Maynard Gibson, who was allowed also involved in the Bahama negotiations, noted that it's a validation that the legal process in the Bahamas worked in the best interest of Bahamians. This amid criticism from various sectors, including former Bahama developer Sarkis Million, that a faster and better result for the multi-billion dollar project could have been achieved had Bahama officials been allowed to carry out their bankruptcy filing in the United States can all look now and see in hindsight that any investment of this size and magnitude that affects such a large sector of the Bahamian people and also affects our economy, we were downgraded. The logical place, the only place that this matter should be adjudicated and was very well adjudicated by a very competent court is in the Bahamas. Think about it, all of you are young people. Would you want something that affected you so personally to be in another country where you have to pay to go to that country to have your matter adjudicated? I mean, when you entered into a contract with someone in Bahama, you didn't bargain, you didn't count on, as the court said, on this being dealt with if there was a dispute in another country. You expected that it would be dealt with here. And our courts, we should, as Bahamians, we should be very, very proud to see that the world can see that our courts work. While she didn't comment on the buyer interested in purchasing Bahamar, the AG described the casino and hotel operator to be world class and that Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, would be the lead spokesperson on that issue. The Attorney General added these developments are a testament that there is still trust in the nation's leader to act positively in the best interest of all stakeholders involved, especially Bahamians. I was more than a little disappointed to hear people say, shut it down, let it sit around until after the election. The election must be held by May next year. That's a further eight months. You saw the emotion in people who were speaking spontaneously last night. People who want power were simply saying, I don't care about your pain, about your suffering. I don't mind if you suffer for eight months more. Is that who you want to lead you? You heard uh, certain gentlemen say that, look, Bahamians were not fighting each other. 
we trusted the prime minister when he said he was putting every ounce of his energy into resolving this matter. And here we have uh, at the helm of our country, someone whom he's not just saying, trust me, people are saying, and people who probably, we don't know what their political persuasion is, but it may not be of the progressive liberal party, but everybody as a Bahamian has rallied around a prime minister that they can trust. Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Obi Wilshkom, said the announcement on Bahamar is great news for the country as well as the tourism sector. Minister Wilshkom says he wants nothing more than to see Bahamians back to work and the resort officially opened. You know, it's taken 20 months to get to the point that we're at now. Now we get to the details and uh, work out the uh, various situations um, that require, firstly, that the employees who all were employed are uh, uh, they're satisfied uh, in terms of uh, their pay. Uh, the second, we have to ensure that the 1,300 um, contractors and vendors and others who were involved are paid. And then, of course, getting the work started. I feel that the government has taken the right approach in terms of the um, negotiating um, with the uh, Chinese and the Exim Bank and others uh, and staying away from the media, staying away from the glare of the media, sitting down negotiating in a way that's required uh, and then all sides could agree and taking it to the Supreme Court, getting the Supreme Court uh, to agree and now go into the next step. Uh, I think it's fundamental for us to understand the import of Bahama to the tourism development. Uh, our inventory count needs to be improved upon. CEO of the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce and Employees Confederation, Edison Sumner, also weighing in on the revamped Bahamar deal that will see hundreds of re-engaged workers and payment to local contractors and vendors fulfilled. Mr. Sumner said while this is welcome to news, it is incumbent of the government to reveal the details of the deal. Um, and from the announcements and from what we've read um, from the documents sent to us last night, uh, that we are pleased certainly that this is taking a positive turn. Um, and that, that we are hopeful that whatever arrangements are made will come to fruition in the timelines that have been projected. Um, but for us, again, it's important for us to see the details of these arrangements. Well, the Prime Minister said himself that within days he's going to begin laying documents out in the public domain. Um, we expect that that's going to happen. This then speaks to the issue we've been talking about now for the last several years, about freedom of information, where uh, the government and government officials are compelled by law to make certain documents public. This is one of those kinds of situations because what you don't want to happen is to wake up one morning and to find out that, that we are in a more disadvantageous position than we were the night before because of what, what might have been in some of these agreements. So for us, freedom of information is extremely important in this instance. And I think that for the government's own credibility in this process, um, they must release the details. State Minister of Finance, the Honorable Michael Halkidis, told members of the media today that there's not much that can be said at this time about the Bahamar matter as it's still in court. This, as the official opposition and other sectors have called for complete transparency. Well, um, I think the PM spoke to it. I'm going to let them um, deal with it. It's still a matter, as you know, in, in court. And so I think the details uh, will come out. Um, and of course, Bahamian people are curious. And so, um, and, and, and do course, um, all will, will be revealed, that's as much as I can say right now. Opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis is also giving his take on the recent developments at the Bahama Resort after Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, announced the big breakthrough in negotiations that will see progress at the site and many Bahamians getting the monies they were owed. The f &M leader spoke with our Cleopatra Murphy this morning. Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis says he and his party would like nothing more than to see the Bahama Resort opened after so many Bahamians lost their jobs because it would strengthen the Bahamian economy. Minnis, however, says he is skeptical of news that work will soon resume at the property and its timing because he doesn't trust Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie and his government. They have proven themselves to be untrustworthy. They have proven themselves. We have heard over and over, oh, there are great news. We have turned the corner. We've been hearing this for about two years. How much longer will we hear? We want to hear the truth. We want to see, see things happening. Prime Minister Christie announced work would begin in September as part of a new agreement with the Export-Import Bank of China. 
Minnis says he would like to know the pertinent details of the agreement and what concessions government granted as the 2017 general election approaches. We want to know how much land, if any, was granted to the Chinese, whether outright or lease. How much land in Andres and how much land in Abaco. We want to know how many citizens citizenship were promised. He says that detail entitles them to fish in Bahamian waters and reap from marine resources. Minnis insists government cannot play with the future of Bahamians for its political survival. We want to know that the government had not entered an agreement that is beneficial for them from a political perspective at this particular time because they are playing politics with the Bahamian populace trying to save themselves while sacrificing the future development of the Bahamas. Minister says Prime Minister Christie has denied suggestions of citizenship concessions before, insisting that the truth will come out. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. Democratic National Alliance leader Branville McCartney said Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie evoked a sense of pity from the Bahamian people for all the, quote, hard work that he and his team has been doing to find a resolution to the Bahamar deal. He said that... Bahamians could have been proud of what was being provided for opportunities for Bahamian contractors to finish the resort, as well as collecting all the taxes that were owed to the Bahamian people, paying the thousands of former workers their outstanding monies, and getting this country from underneath a construction company that appeared to have a hold on the government.